Uh, Steve Melendez, and I was the producer of the film, along with David Connell in New York, who worked for the Children's Television Workshop. They're the people that produce uh, Sesame Street. And anyway, I got involved in it because CTW had a contract with a company who pulled out, they decided they didn't want to do it. And so they were desperately running around trying to find some studio who could do a two-hour TV show for them in what was essentially nine months. And eventually they came to us, uh, or came, went to Bill in Los Angeles. And he said the only way he could do it was in the, in the London office. He called me, and I said, no, the only way I could do it is bringing other studios in because we just didn't have the capacity to turn out this amount of work. And so that's what happened. We had two studios in London and one studio in Barcelona and, of course, a studio in Los Angeles. And a logistical nightmare, keeping all this uh, together. And I was flying back and forth from London to Los Angeles to New York and Barcelona. Bill was doing the same. And he and I sometimes would just cross and wave at each other, uh, you know, in airplanes. Um, but just trying to get this thing done in time. And it was, uh, uh, I mean, it worked out fairly well, considering. <clears throat> but, and we had a, a lot of problems, uh, particularly with the, the communications, because uh, it takes a long time to learn to talk to somebody on the telephone. You know, and that idea that you say blue and they hear red. And this happens all the time. And it takes a while to do that. That's why the flying, you know, physically going back and forth. Bill, much more than me, uh, he was flying back and forth and dealing with everything. But I had, uh, well, I was going to Barcelona every other week during the uh, thing. I was also going to LA, and I was carrying things back and forth. This is before email, before fax machines. And uh, so if you wanted to send a drawing, you had to get it there physically. And so you either had to get a, an air freight company. And air freight companies, they didn't have couriers in those days. I mean, you had to pay somebody to actually fly to get something there overnight. So I was doing that. And my dad was doing that. And Dave Connell was doing that. And uh, there are people in the studio in Barcelona who were doing that. And that's a problem because everything worked fine between all of us. The other studio, which was TV Cartoons in London, they, of course, because they were next door, we didn't bother to see them. We just assumed you know, that osmosis, it would work, and that they would uh, uh, understand everything we had. So uh, kind of funny, next door was a big problem with communication, but not the, far, the uh, overseas bits. The CTW had originally uh, contracted to a, a studio to do the work, and this studio, were wor they were working on the design, and they just could not get it right. And I assume, I don't really know the full story, but that there were some arguments between them. And finally, this other studio resigned it. And so having had like two and a half years to do this thing, they suddenly ended up, by the time they found us, they only had the nine months left because they had an air date. And it was going out on CBS television in the States, and they'd book two one-hour slots on a Sunday night and a Monday night. And it was sponsored by Kraft, who had agreed to put it out without any commercials. So the only breaks in it were uh, station IDs, which they have to do legally in the, the States. At least they did in those days. So we had uh, to do this in these two halves. We had the air date, and you couldn't change it. And the reason it was done that way is because Kraft were doing a, um, a reading program encouraging kids to uh, read books rather than watch television. And so what they did with this, they tied in with the publishers and they supplied copies of the books to schools all over America, a teaching aid. And then the, uh, the idea was that the kids would read the book, watch the program. So on Monday, they go into school. The teacher would give them a, uh, uh, something to write about. You know, what was different from the book to this bit, and then same thing on the next night. And uh, it was incredibly successful. One of our animators in Los Angeles, his wife is a teacher, and 
she said it was the first time she ever got her kids to read a book, you know, you know, any time she'd been teaching. So it was great. So it really worked well as far as I know. And, uh, but anyway, but that was the reason for all the, uh, the time constraints. You just could not go out and um, get those, those slots again. The original book was illustrated, but there were book illustrations. And uh, sometimes it's just impossible to take those and make them move. That is very difficult. Uh, and so, it would, if, they, if they haven't been designed for that. And so we went out and just designed, uh, we got a designer in, Al Sheehan, who was a really good uh, designer. And he did some incredibly off the wall things, which are on the uh, DVD, and which we loved. And everybody said, well, that's fine. We went to the uh, copyright owners and they hated them. And so we had to redesign. And then, in fact, within that context, when I was, because uh, I started animating on it in London to set the style, and I'd animated on the first section about two minutes when the word came down that the uh, copyright holders didn't like the, care, the, the kids, the designs of the kids. And so we had to redesign them. And then, they called up and said, ah, and we also don't like the voices. So we had to re-record them. And so uh, that, that lost us about five weeks. Because it, it's not just draw, doing a drawing of a character. You have to draw the character, do a model sheet, get this disseminated to everybody involved. And um, uh, so just a nightmare. But we managed to get over it. <laughs> For America, we had to cast American voices. And back then, which was what, 70, 79, there were, 78, there was um, a whole series of American schools in London. And I went to all of them and, and interviewed all these kids and or auditioned them and found a family. Perfect, there were five of them. So we cast four kids. And they were absolutely wonderful. And they treated each other just like brothers and sisters. Two boys and two girls. And, uh, and they would argue with each other. I just let them go when we were recording. They were wonderful. And those are the voices that the, the Americans didn't like. They thought they were too, uh, too strident or maybe too honest or too real. And so they wanted a bit more stylized. So we went in and we had to recast them all. I have to remember when we did this, uh, you know, nobody had computers, nobody had, there was no 3D animation going on unless it was puppets. And it, in order to get animals talking, etc., it was very difficult unless you did like they did in The Wizard of Oz. And so, you know, the obvious way to do this was in animation, 2D. And uh, so that's why we did it this way. Now, of course, you would approach it in a different way. That was, uh, then, there was no choice. Right at the end of the film, there's a whole sequence when the kids go back through the woods and back to um, England. Eddie Radage, who was the uh, animation director of that sequence, thought, well, we don't have time to actually animate this properly. So he went out with a little Super 8 camera and shot a bunch of horses in a field and got people to ride them around and do that and they wrote they rotoscoped to the horses so they got the action right because uh well it's very hard to animate uh, a four-legged character and horses are difficult and we just didn't have time to teach people and so we went out and did it that way and so it has a slightly different feel that one section where they all there's a was the hunt for the white stag but I mean, but it worked really well, and Eddie was really good because he stylized it. You know, he didn't actually you know, take the live action and use that. He stylized it quite a bit, and it looks really good. And if you watch it you know, uh, carefully, you almost believe it's a real horse sometimes, and the stag running. That's uh, but, but that's the closest thing we ever got to CGI. The way they did it, uh, they shot it kind of um, in uh, multiplane. We won an Emmy on it, and uh, it, 
had all kinds of awards all over the place. I don't know what they all were. I just produced it. They don't tell me these things. The, the, uh, I assume the people in Atlanta and in uh, New York have all of those things. 